You can do anything you want to do. Everybody's got confidence inside them. And the more positive you become, guess what? The more confidence you get. Welcome to Island Influencers, where we share stories of successful business owners, experienced professionals, entrepreneurs, and community leaders based or with influence in the Isle of Man. This podcast is brought to you by Thornton Chartered Financial Planners, because great financial planning has the power to change your life. Now, here's your host, Sharon Sutton. My island influencer this week is self-funded entrepreneur Jo Cutsforth, her desire in life being to make you and your people shine. Jo left her home in Warrington at the age of 17 with just £25 in her pocket and a desire to go off and do her own thing. So she took a hop, skip and a jump, one-way ticket to the Isle of Man. Her story is one huge life lesson for us all. There's no doubt that Jo suffered hardship. She talks of living in a homeless refuge with her two small children and only being able to start a career at the age of 32. However, Jo doesn't want people to feel sorry for her. She says, I'm not getting the violins out. I'm just telling you the story. She wants to encourage everyone to keep learning, get behind people and help them be valued. Jo's independence, resilience and positive attitude have helped her survive. Listen to this week's episode with Jo Cutsforth in episode 80 of Island Influencers. Welcome to Joe Cutsforth of Joe Cutsforth Training and Coaching to this episode of Island Influences. Thanks so much for coming along and, and being my guest, Joe. It's lovely to meet you. Thank you so much for having me here, Sharon. So well, we, what we'd normally do, and if it's okay with you, I'd really like to know all about where you've come from, where you've got to, because I know from what you've shared in advance of this podcast, you've got a really fab story to share a very very interesting one so would you mind telling the listeners what you what you told me about yeah sure where you've come from it's like Joe Cutsforth life story not quite but anyway so I'm from Warrington so I'm a northern lass through and through um and you can take the girl from Warrington but you can't take Warrington out of the girl fair enough so I came to the Isle of Man um I just turned 17 in the October 88 and in the December 1988 I came to the Isle of Man now, I'd already been working since I was 14, um, part-time as a silver service waitress. What, in Warrington? In Warrington, Wh- yeah. Which hotel was it? Oh, it was called the Fir Grove Hotel. It's still there now. I, my, my sister got married there. No way. <laughs> she did. I yeah. probably served her the yeah. roast dinner. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> but before your time. Was I it? All right. Yeah, yeah, um, but yeah, yeah, so then um, I've always wanted to, to leave um, Warrington. I, yeah. I miss my family dreadfully. I'm very close to my family. Mm-hmm. Um, and not just mum and dad and, and brother, but also aunties, uncles, cousins. And we all keep in touch on social media, catch up when I'm in Warrington. But um, I've always had the desire to kind of go off and do my own thing. And I've been massively independent, I think, ever since I uh, learned to, to tie my own shoelaces and things like <laughs> Fabulous. that. Fabulous. Do my, br- my brother's tie for school and yeah. things. So Gosh. anyway, so I came to the Isle of Man um, with, on a one-way ticket with £25 in my purse, literally. You're, so you were 17 at this point? 17, yeah. Oh, grief. And uh, got mum and dad's blessing to go off and, and, um, and just live my life really mum and dad were really really um supportive of that really and they knew how independent I was so had you done done O levels and stuff by that GCSEs I did GCSEs in fact I was one of the of the of the of the children that in 1986 when the uh, GCE and the CSE was changed into the GCSE so coursework teachers that didn't think even knew what they were doing it was a massive change going from CSE and O level mm. into GCSE so although I loved school I wasn't really ready to learn mm. so my GCSEs were all low levels you know even though I have loads of common sense yeah you weren't ready to learn no you know oh listen you know I was a I was a teenager I knew it all <laughs> you know and um but I also knew that as soon as I'd left school, I was going to come to the Isle of Man anyway. What, what attracted you to the island? <laughs> well, my mum and dad used to bring me here in the 70s for okay. the bowling festival. So I thought, well, if I'm going to travel, it'd be a good place to start. It's not far away from home. Yeah. And I can remember fond memories of going along the promenade on a horse tram and things like that. It's crazy, isn't it? Yeah, you know? old nostalgia. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I just I just chose the Isle of Man because it was, it was a, a place that I could do like a hop, skip and a jump to, really. Yeah, yeah. I didn't Not... feel too far away from home. Yeah. Well, well done <laughs> Thank for, you. for finding us. Well, I stayed here for about a year and a half and yep. then I went to Jersey for a year. Oh, OK. Yeah. I got a job in a pub right. and then I saw an advertisement in a paper for a children's entertainer. 
And right. I always quite fancied that. It was a bit like a holiday rep thing. Okay. When and that pe- was in Jersey? Yeah. Right. And when, so when people, this is in 1990, so when people say to me, I can imagine you being a holiday rep. It was just like that. I walked <laughs> into this place. I'd had a load of experience with childminding because in, in, when I was in the Isle of Man waitressing, lots of customers I got friendly with asked me to childmind their kids for them at weekends or nights and yeah. stuff. So I just said, look, I've been childminding for the last few years. I'm chief babysitter in my big family in Warrington. I've got loads of experience. And he was desperate. He wanted, I've got a plane load of people with families coming and they're, they're coming to a kids club. I've got no children's entertainer. When can you start? Uh-huh. So I said next week. And that was it. I spent the whole summer. It was called the Jersey Holiday Village <laughs> in Portland Bay. It's now closed down. There's all luxury apartments built there yeah. and again that was just another to me it was all about communicating with families parents massive trust because no one knew me from adam no no it wasn't like there was any vetting going on back in the early 90s so then i came back to the isle of man in 91 to settle down and and, um, and have children so i had my children at 21 and 23 um it's crazy because i didn't really want children until i was in my 30s <laughs> right. where i became a stepmom quite quite young right so I had a massive u-turn and thought well if I'm gonna if I'm looking after somebody else's children yeah I might as well have my own so yeah so I I I started my family early and then all through my 20s it was working in retail and hospitality yeah um because it just fitted in with school so how did you get to the point where well how are we going to bring in the point about being in a homeless refuge yes what what happened my marriage broke down I had nowhere to go um my my children were six and four I could have gone back to Warrington and my family would have supported me. But whether it was stubbornness or just independence or actually the fact that I'd, I'd been here 11 years on the island and I really loved it. Yeah. It's a great place to bring kids up. So, um, yes, I ended up in a refuge with a few bin bags. And I'm not getting the violins out. I'm just telling you the story. Yeah, yeah. It was my choice um, for the for the marriage to end. It, it broke down. And um, I left with a few bin bags, £200 and my car, which was on a... A, b- a bank loan gosh uh, yeah and um so oh, isn't it amazing that there's somewhere <laughs> for you to to go though yeah the women's refuge yeah. it was amazing and and again I, I i just looked i went to the government and just asked about where i could go anyway um i got on my feet and i just worked really really hard and then children were getting bigger yeah they were at school i suppose at, at that point yeah yeah, yeah they fortunately were just, yeah they were just approaching um high school and um it's, it's it's finding employers too that are flexible enough to let you yeah not to work nine build, till yeah, three yeah. yeah build in yeah child, i used to child, write off to loads because back, back back in them days i didn't have a computer or anything i was 32 before i got sat in front of a pc so it's never too late to learn but uh I don't know, I just thought that now's the time that I can look for something that, that I really want to do. Um, I've got a, such a positive attitude, Sharon. I can the, tell. Yeah, <laughs> the, we've only met each other for five minutes. Yes. Um, I do believe with the right attitude that you can do anything you want to do. People talk about confidence and say, I've got no confidence. Everybody's got confidence inside them. It all starts with you and your mind and how you think. And the more positive you become, guess what? the more confidence you get. You heard I'm, it here first. <laughs> yes. I'm, here, I'm now 32 and I'm working for a vending company on the yep. Isle of Man and desperately wanting a career, writing off to places, not getting anywhere. Anyway, I was at the steam packet filling machines out there and my manager rings up and says, go over to Lloyd's offshore. That's when they used to be at Peveril Buildings. Yes. Someone's turned in sick and the machines need cleaning and filling. I said, okay. So I walked into this call centre and there were so many people with headsets on. Okay. A bit like we are today. (laughs) Exactly. It's like my old call centre days here. (laughs) And um, I looked around and I thought, do you know what? I could do this job because I could talk a glass eye to sleep on the best of days anyway. (laughs) So um, I got home. I got my pen and paper out because I didn't have a computer. And I wrote and wrote and wrote and wrote. And eventually I got an interview. And I started my career in 2003 at 32, working at Lloyd's well Offshore well in a call centre. All power to your elbow, Mrs. Thank you. Fabulous. <laughs> okay, so what happened next? So I did three years there. Yep. And then it was time to move on. Yep. And there was a customer services job available um, that was become available at Manx Telecom. Mm-hmm. And I didn't think for one minute I'd get it. But again... Get in there with that positive attitude. And yeah. If, yeah, and if you don't get it, put it down to experience. Got nothing to lose. Loved my time at Lloyd's, by the way. And I must say that the culture of Lloyd's um, International was amazing. And the training that you that I got from 
that job back in 2003, I still use them skills now. Yeah. Yeah, you know, yeah, I must uh, say I, that absolutely. I, I'm saying Barclays background. Are you the I, same? A, a lot of the same skills mm-hmm. that you use every day. Yeah. Mm. yeah, for sure. It's unbelievable. You know, culture. Even then was big, but now it's absolutely colossal. It's it's massive. Everyone's talking about a positive culture, and when we look at what people are looking for when they when they're looking for a job culture's right up there. Mm-hmm. Forget about salary. It's about the working conditions and the culture oh, yeah. around around the environment that they're working in. So anyway, um, this job came up um, with Manx Telecom in customer services. There was a lot more, much more responsibility with it. Anyway, I got the job. Yeah, and within the five years that I was at Manx Telecom, I did three different roles. It just happened to things that were just being moved around and um, we had some restructures. So within five years, after the five years, I'd not only worked in customer services and dealt with complaints and complaint handling, there was also things like um, training people up in customer services. And that's where I started to find th- find my kind of niche thing. That I really love training people up. And then I got into sales and started being a, like a sales administrator and supporting the account managers. And then I ended up working on a desk with about 15 women. In, in, it, was in it was in residential, fixed line and mobile sales. And it was such a fantastic um, team of people and a lot of the girls they're still there they're at Manx Telecom but in 2011 I got a LinkedIn message out of the blue by one of the directors from Telecom who moved to Shaw Shaw had just set up on the business ah, side okay Andy Andy Brideson and oh. uh, do you know him I did know him yeah. oh wow what really lovely, lovely and I'm gonna start crying now yeah, I didn't know, yeah lovely yeah, yeah. guy well yeah. I didn't really know him that well at Manx Telecom because it was my manager that reported to him yes so we'd see each other on the stairs passing high or at annual events anyway he messaged me and said Joe come and see me I've got an opportunity for you so I went okay so I went down to um, they were on Athel Street at the time yeah. I want to give you a job just straight out and I said sorry he said um, oh it's come work for me I said you want me to come work for you he said yeah he said, I, don't, I don't even know you he said I've seen your sales figures Joe well, what if I don't fit in? You'll fit in fine. We <laughs> chatted away for ages and he, yeah. pr- he said to me, if you come and work for me, I promise you, Joe, I will make you shine. So after further negotiations, I accepted the job and we worked together for three years. And then I moved on, he moved in. And then unfortunately, Andy passed away. He got poorly and passed away. I moved on, I went to Manx Radio, had a good time there, and then I spent five years at the Creamery, fantastic, fantastic time at the Creamery, I loved every minute of it. What were you doing there? Gosh, everything, everything (laughs) from sales to event management, so the, um, I would look after people. (laughs) Not milking cows. (laughs) (laughs) If I needed to, I would, I'd get the wellies on and I would do it, no, I'm joking, but um, I... uh, the job was predominantly a sales role. Yes. However, you would help out in the office if you needed to. It was like a big family. Everybody helped each other out. Yeah. Um, and then there was the event side of it. So there was the agricultural shows, the food and drink festival that I was responsible for. And lots of promotion about local. And occasionally I would hop over to the UK and go and visit Tesco as well. Because the supermarkets is something that I looked after. And right. catering, again, because of my hospitality background and catering background, had lots of contacts there. Yeah. <laughs> um, I remember Costa, me and my colleague, putting the telephone lines in for them at Telecom when they first arrived in 2009, yeah. uh, 2008, 2009. And here we are, here we are now at the Creamery as their account manager for, for, for dairy. So it was crazy. And yeah. that's the great thing about the Isle of Man. Yeah. Good relationships, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it is. It yeah. is. <laughs> the so. interconnectedness of everything, but on the Isle of Man especially. So, Well, it's yeah. a great place to do business. And, mm. you know, you just don't know. You can be dealing with somebody putting their telephone lines in. And 10 years later, you could be working for them like I did with the Greenery. So yeah, it is. Yeah. it is. It's it's a, a massive, uh, you know, it, the Isle of Man's fantastic for doing. Yeah. You know, for doing business. It is. So how did you get into the training and coaching role? Okay, so I've always trained and coached. Um, Evidently. <laughs> um, and um, thank, thanks to Manx Telecom, who actually put me through my ILM, which is the Institute Leadership Management. Yes. They put me through and I passed in 2009. So I've always coached, mentored and trained people, but never really done it as just a sole job. Yeah. So um, 
I also have another little business on the side as well, which I launched a year ago, which is a domestic services business. And I've been using the profits from that to now launch this training yeah. and coaching business. So I'm self-funded. It's not like I've got bank loans here, there and everywhere. I'm pretty no, well done. proud of myself that yeah, you know, you I've worked be. hard. Um, so yeah, what came about really is it's my age. I'm 51 now. And if I don't start Gosh. giving back... And, and and giving to, to, to people what I know, what I'm passionate about, which is providing the best possible customer experience ever. And when we say customer experience or customer service, Sharon, it's not just about external customers. It's people who we're dealing with all the time, you know, and how we come across. It could be that we may never, ever in a job ever deal with a, a customer, but we might have a colleague mm. that's still a customer. Yeah. It's the passion for watching somebody grow and develop and shine, you know. Yeah. And um, what I want to do next year is 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 work. Well, I'll work with anybody of any size company, um, but predominantly my business model is around people that are beginning in a customer service or sales role, or they're going back to one. Mm. So it's predominantly helping people get on that ladder and understanding how important customer services yeah no indeed so what what made you transition to this i mean it's a bold step to go and work for <laughs> yourself isn't it having been in, in employed roles right throughout yeah. your career up until that point yeah. what was the what was the catalyst for doing that really it's having more flexibility really yeah um okay you don't get sick pay and holiday pay as you do in a big in a big business but it's it's rewarding in other ways as well you're your own boss um it means i can ski whenever i want to ski and I'm a big skier, <laughs> oh, yeah. so yeah. Right. So I tend to go away um, in the winter, but it doesn't yeah. stop me. I can still work remotely, and that's the good thing about it is I can be in France and still be working. Well, why not? Yeah, so the internet works everywhere. Absolutely, it? That's yeah, the point. yeah, <laughs> yeah, great. And especially from a coaching perspective as well, you know, more and more people are now becoming um, remote, mm-hmm. and they they're comfortable with remote working in terms of Zoom or Teams or, or WhatsApp. So. Um, it just fitted in. It was the right time to do it. But I want to make it clear, it's it's the main driver for this is to start helping people understanding how important it is yeah. to have customer service skills. Let me give you an example. There are three types of a school leaver. Your A-levels, mm-hmm. looked after. The schools have hit the targets. They've got the kids through their GCSEs, good grades, and now they're going to go on and do their A-levels. Yeah. School leaver number two, college they found something that they want to do at college and then school leaver number three which was me and lots of other people just get turfed out onto the streets and expect 16 yeah 16 Mm. exactly and expect to sit an interview expect to have confidence and effective communication we've not took our eyes off each other the minute we came in this room they don't know about eye contact. So <laughs> what I want to do is work. <laughs> yeah. So I'm just, I'm just yeah. making a sign. Well, you're just looking at my phone. <laughs> yeah, Sharon's doing a sign of, of, what, of what a lot of the kids are doing these days. Yeah. And it's not difficult to be able to turn a 16-year-old school leaver into someone that's confident and focused about customers. Just, just showing them the way and understanding that you've been there, you know. Yeah. So what I want to do is I want to meet with the high schools next year and, and work with them on this. And uh, wouldn't it be lovely if they sat a six-week after-school workshop with me, for example, and after it they got an award and they wa- walked into any any job at 16 because A-levels wasn't for them, college wasn't for them. They're only left with work, really, aren't they? That's mm. the only th- I can't think of a fourth thing that they have to do. Gap year, travel. Yeah, yeah. if they can afford to do it, if parent, if their parents can afford to, to yeah. support them, but yeah. the majority of them. And if we don't offer this, there will be a small number of those of those school leavers that potentially yeah. could get into bad crowds. Well, what's what they used to call them? Neat, neat, not an employment, education or training. That's, that's right. That's yeah. where they get uh, categorised, don't they? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if that's still a, a category that's, that's widely spoken about. Yeah. Mm. So I would like to to uh, meet up with other other businesses, other organisations, charities. That's my kind of thing next year. I right. want to network yeah. and collaborate with any business or any charity that's going to be getting involved in something like this. And I want to work with them, yeah. work together in bringing these school leavers on and helping them. Because, you know, it's an awful thing to say. And it's quite a, um, a northern word, scrap heap. 
but that's what happens if we don't get behind them. There has to be... I understand that the schools have got their targets and they've yeah. got to get the kids through, so many percentage of kids through a GCSE, but yes. what they've got to understand is some of them, they're not thick. They're just not ready to learn. Yeah. You know, and I'm a proven example of that because I was such a late developer in everything in my life, not just, you know, just me as a person that... You know, I was written off as well, but we're not. We all learn in different ways. We all do. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. some kids are just not academic, and it doesn't mean that they should be left on the scrap heap. And definitely, before they get turfed out onto the streets to try and find work, we need to prepare them for that. Mm. Yes. Have you worked with any um, junior achievement uh, people on this? They're I'm very early stages with this. Yes. I yeah, am. yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, the, the, yeah. I, I did an episode with Sue Cook um, okay. f- quite a while ago. The two of you should definitely talk about That'd be great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely. I'm, I'm, I'm up for meeting with anybody. I'm up for learning about this. I'm coming into this very early stages. Yes. But, but, what, but what pays the day job? You know, you're, the sort of the normal clients that you would deal with outside yeah. of school leavers, there's... Um, do you do you train in in banks and things like that yeah so it's not just when you look at my website it says individuals businesses and school leavers so it's any business of any size now a lot of banks a lot of corporate organizations they'll have their own in-house training or coaching yes but sometimes they think actually let's bring somebody in a bit different a bit oh, why fresh wouldn't you? Totally let's, fresh, yeah, let's bring someone that's been in a call center mm. or that's that's that spent a whole life emailing customers because it's not just about how we talk to people it's how we listen it's how we read an email <laughs> it's how we reply yes. to it isn't it yes yeah, not being a keyboard warrior yeah. yeah yeah indeed we've met a few of those in our time haven't we <laughs> So now, you know, we're, we're getting chat boxes that are becoming more popular, AI. Yeah. Um, you know, it's important that we, 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 if people are working in a, in, a, in a bank or in a, in a building society or in any kind of a corporate um, insurance, any kind of a corporate business, and I'm sure that um, a lot of these businesses do have a customer service or a customer experience strategy, that all teams are aligned with that as well. That's really important. Mm, yeah. And the amount of people I talk to that say, actually, my, one of the questions I ask is, so where are we in alignment here with your teams? Well, we're not. Oh. You know, so that's yeah. really important because then everyone's getting the same message. Everyone's under, yes. they're all on the same page, aren't they? <laughs> yeah, usually you start at board level and work down. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but it's all about communication. Yeah. It's Fantastic. all about being clear. Yeah, it's okay. totally. Yeah. Get, get you entirely what you, what you mean. So I'm going to throw a question at you now. Oh, go on then. Okay, so if you don't mind me asking. Not at all. Um, and primarily I ask this in my day job, okay. which is a financial planner. But for you, how was how was money growing up? What, I mean, what are your earliest memories around it? And has um, it shaped your beliefs okay. today? Um, well, this is going to sound funny, right? I'm not getting, I'm not getting the violins, I promise you. I didn't see a piece of steak till I was... 18 I bought it for myself on my 18th birthday I worked at the Sefton at the time because I come come over in the 88 and worked at the golf links then moved to the Sefton because I wanted to be in the big lights of Douglas oh yeah of course <laughs> so I did about I did about eight or nine months at the, at, the, at the golf links and then came to Douglas and um worked at the Sefton it was my birthday and um, we all we all we all had a, a table in the restaurant and I had my first steak so yeah think like I'll, I'll be honest with you you know, you know, I know, I know things are hard for people at the moment um, with bills and money and gas and electric going up. But when I was growing up as a kid, all we got told every minute of the day, turn the lights out, shut the door, the heating, the lighting. So I was brought up. Yeah, put a jumper on. Yeah, put three on. You know, <laughs> yeah. your mum would put a hot water bottle in the bed. Yes. And you wouldn't be able yeah. to feel it. Can't to put the heating off. <laughs> What's heating? <laughs> We didn't, we had one we fire. Have, yeah, there was didn't. ice on the inside of the windows. <laughs> but we're all right, we survived it. Yeah, and, it is. Um, funny that. You know, but um, even when I was a single parent, you know, in the 90s and noughties, yeah. when there were people, not everybody, but there were people having it good and things were cheap. Yeah, that was my time when times were hard for me. So all I'm saying to anybody out there that's experiencing this for the first time, and there's lots of young families that are experiencing this where, you know, your gas is expensive, you know, the bills are expensive, food's expensive. Honestly, a lot of us have been there before and you will get through it. It's all about just living your means and budgeting. Excellent. Thank you very much. Fabulous answer. So all of what you've done so far in your life, what's given you the most fulfillment, would you say? Can you give a specific example or? Um, that's a great question, that actually, Sharon. What's given me the most fulfillment? Okay, well, well there's two parts, I would say. First of all, being a mum. Um, it's the hardest job in the world. 
Um, there's so much pressure now with social media. I didn't have any of that when my kids were younger. There's no book, as we know. We all make mistakes. I think I got to 40 and did so much reflecting. You know, I could have filled the room with, the, with that amount of mirrors that I was <laughs> reflecting on of being a parent. And Because let's be honest, every day as a parent, we make decisions that we have to make at that time with the resources that we've got. You know, and sometimes we make good choices and sometimes we make bad. But I look at it and think, well, look, I wasn't the best parent in the world, but I definitely wasn't the worst. My bills were paid on, on time. The washing machine was never was never switched off. The food was in the, in, in the cupboards and the bills were always paid, you know. And what we did have in our house was a lot of love. So I think that gave me fulfilment that um, I did my best to try and show my children the right way in life. That's all you can do, isn't it? As Absolutely. A yeah, yeah. Um, Based on what you know, you know to that point. Yeah. You know, that they're adults. You've experienced. You know, they have to make their own decisions in life. That's yeah. how it is. I've had to kind mm. of like, a, you know, take the apron strings off. And then from a business <laughs> perspective, <laughs> starting my career late in life as well. I'm doing something with uh, with Love Tech at the moment in collaboration with Love Tech called Tech Mums. And Great. Yeah, and I was absolutely, oh, I was thrilled when I was asked would I do it. Because I am like a tech mum. You know, I have learned late in life. And it's never too late, never too late to learn anything, whether it's to do with your career or whether it's just something you want to learn for yourself. Don't let um, attitude hold you back. No, it'd be great to have. It would be great to have a link to that as well, with all your details that we'll have at the, you know, in the show notes. Yes, I will. But the yeah. Tech mom things. We're in, yeah, we're in week two of, of week. Sounds of, fascinating. Of, unbelievable. It's been fantastic. The first week was all about um, the platform and introducing mums to about technology. This week just gone was about cloud and about Google Drive. Next week it's all going to be about um, scams and how to be safe online, and also parent, parental controls for your kids. Yeah, and are you recording them sort of like a replay session, or is it all? Uh, it's, it just... all, it's all on, a, on like a Tech Mums is a, a UK franchise that Love Tech have brought to the Isle of Man okay. that they pay for yeah. um, and then um, Play Tech have sponsored it for us and um, so anybody can, can, can go to yeah. you know every year we're hoping to keep doing Tech Mums so um, if anyone's got any um, questions around the Tech Mums Club that I'm running at the moment which is free by the way next year yeah, 2023. 2023. We're hoping to run another Tex Mums session. Yeah. Because yeah. this one will have just finished. But it's, uh, well, you'd be able to do an article on it. And, yeah, yeah, definitely. We'll share definitely. it all around, won't we? Yeah. Just don't, don't ever be frightened of technology because it's not going to go away. No. no Embrace it. it. Yeah, yeah. You know, and don't be frightened of asking questions because I'll be honest with you, you know, I must have annoyed people them all my life. <laughs> sure, What's yeah. this for? What's why is that? What's this? And God, yeah. Joe, give it a rest. But I'm, if you just ask questions, it's amazing how one thing leads to another. So, for any uh, existing or aspiring business owner yes. or entrepreneur, yes, what's your number one tip? Don't ever give up. You'll have demons in your head. What are you doing this for? Why? Next thing you go, oh yeah, this is great. You know, <laughs> when you're setting up a business, you know, that you, we don't, we're, at, at, at the end of the day, we are flesh and blood, and we forget that so much is expected of us these days. To, you know, when I look back at my parents, as much as I love them, I don't think they worked as hard as what we all work now. It's full on, isn't it? Yeah, because we're we're always available. We've yeah. got email. Yeah, we've yeah. got um, you know social media. And they worked hard, don't get me wrong, um, but it was a different kind of working hard. It was, yeah, a, different, so a different sort of worry. Yeah, You've got to learn to switch off. Yeah. Sorry, Sean, you were going to say. No, no, I think that the, the worry that we have is all in our heads. I think you said that right at the beginning. And yeah. whether it's the fear of running out of food yes. or being hypothermic, it's it's a different worry to the, one, the worries that we have mm. today. Yeah. But non nonetheless, it's all still worry the things we make up yeah just we, don't ever give yeah. up if you've got a passion and and you're not going to and here's something really important i'm reading um content dna by john esperian so if anybody's out going out there right now and they are looking to start a business and and, and you're going to be do you because you're going to be the sales that you're going to help be the sales and marketing person yes. for your own business you can't afford to employ <laughs> anybody else if you're starting off so all i will say to you is read content dna I'm about halfway through it. And that's a fantastic book. Just be yourself. 
And in the book, John explains, you are never, ever going to please everybody. Some people will love you and some people will despise you. And you've got to accept that you can't please everybody, you know. But if you're out, I've always wanted to do this. It's never been the right time for me. I bought my first house in 2014, by the way. Well done. From being in a refuge to, sorry, I just thought I'd get that one in <laughs> to buy my house. I'm, I'm really proud of that. It's got a bit, bit random throwing that in. But that's what I'm saying. Don't ever give up. No. Okay. You know, it's so important. Great tip. And it is. You're quite right. So I don't know this. You're going to be, have an answer to this one because I can't actually ma- imagine you doing this, but <laughs> I'm sure you do. So what do you do to relax? What do you do to keep your... Okay. <laughs> <laughs> There's an off switch somewhere. My partner, Dave, after three years has just about found it. <laughs> um, so it's left on my shoulder. Um, I love cooking. Yeah. I love cooking and I love, when the kids were younger, it was always about trying to stretch food and, and make make things last. You know, we hear, we hear of this saying, make, do and mend, and that's how it used to be. And um, we're getting them to eat it. I know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, jo- you know, Joseph, my son, will say, will always say to his friends, do you remember that time, mum, when I wouldn't eat my tea the night before and you give it to me the next day for me tea? And I said, yeah, we did. He said, because we couldn't. You know, and it sounds terrible. You know, some people would think that's pure thats pure um, child torture, making the child eat the same meal the next day. But that's how it was. So um, what I'm saying is, you know, I didn't have the budget to make three separate meals in my house for me, my daughter and my son. You no, know, you this is what we were having and that yeah. was it. And yeah, yeah. Budget or time. Yeah. Well, the time as well. Yeah. <laughs> it's time is money. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I love cooking. I love messing around. I'm not... Um, a fancy cook it's all to do with flavour with me when we were when the kids were young it was like 100 things you could do with a bag of mints as long as you've got garlic and herbs <laughs> and um, there's a really good friend of mine called Julie Rotherham who works at Manx Telecom and back in 2007 she calls me Joby and she's I hope to god she's listening to this she'll, 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 she'll just die laughing and we were talking about you know what we can do with chicken and she turned around one day and said Joby don't throw the ch- did, did you th- oh, we're doing a roast chicken did yes. you throw the carcass out I said yes I did oh, she, no. said, she said no she said is it in the bin now go home tonight and wash it out <laughs> oh god <laughs> just, just joking but anyway and she taught me what I could do with the chicken yes. carcass it's and amazing, now isn't it? oh my gosh Sharon mm. you know I was 30 before I learned to cook before then I would burn a salad <laughs> oh god <laughs> <laughs> So now it's all about, I look in the fridge, I see yeah. what needs using up. And um, yeah, so, so cooking, it stops me talking cooking because I'm looking at <laughs> recipes. Yeah, no. And also skiing. That's why I don't go on a hot holiday. Yeah. Because I'm thinking about things. My head's going round. Whereas with skiing, I have to focus on what I'm doing. Yeah. I'll, come off, yeah. I'll come, off, come off the slope. Yeah, that's not so, good. Yeah. That wouldn't be good. <laughs> So what do, what do you think are the best things about living in the Isle of Man? You've said about the oh, interconnectedness wow. before. Yeah. So f- from a business perspective, yeah, I think it's a fantastic place to do business. I think we've got so much freedom, the security of it. You're never safe anywhere, but you're safer. You're much safer on the Isle of Man. You know, we can never get, we, we should never ever get complacent or assume that no, nothing could, bad could happen. I just think that um, it's a worry for some people in terms of um, property. So, for example, we know in the hospitality and the retail um, sector, everybody's struggling at the moment to to get those places filled. So if you've got a couple in the UK that, say, is a chef and a, and a restaurant manager and they've bought, they've sold their house for 250000 in the North West and they're mortgage-free and then somebody heads on them to come to the, to the Isle of Man, that house would be 350000 on the Isle of Man. So it's this is why, at the moment, it's all the finance that's being targeted and the finance people to the Isle of Man. But where the big gap, in the, where the big gap is really is in hospitality no, no, and retail. Is. And yes. I'm hoping with, with Joe Cutsforth training and coaching that we can then bring these kids up um, that are... That's school leaver number three again, what we spoke about. Yeah. And get them into something like that or construction or something. And it'll give them a good, a good grounding for the future. They won't want to just move away like, well, the the school school leader number one, they move away. After 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 the A-levels for uni. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Very few come back. Yeah, exactly. That was was the case when I was at school anyhow. Good point. Yeah, Yeah, it's true. It's still happening now. Yeah. Okay. So... 
you've um, you've highlighted a big problem and a and a, and a potential solution. So mm, hopefully, yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank you for that. If I, if I can if I can collaborate and work with the right people. Um, I think I, well, I don't think I know we can do it. See what we can put you do about putting in, you in touch with some people, and um, you know, be amazing. there'll be a contact details um, for Joe in the show notes. So if any listener mm-hmm. has any ideas, maybe you could contact her uh, directly. Please do. And I've also joined just recently joined Chamber of Commerce as well, um, and they'll be they're very um, proactive. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. which is great. Okay, so so Joe, what's um, the the business is quite new. You've got yes. you've got a lot lined up. So the, this this school um, this school leaver seminar is, is the next thing for you on the horizon on, on top of what you're ordinary what you what you're doing right now. Yes, it is. So um, I was, was going to say ordinarily though, <laughs> nothing's ordinary, is it, in your life? So yeah. No. Okay. Well, that, yeah. that's 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 wonderful, and thanks for sharing. I want to see of that. the I want to see the, the school leavers. Yeah. I want to get behind them, and I want to make them shine because yeah. they deserve it. Yeah, they do. They do indeed. So you mentioned one book that you've you're reading right now. Yeah. Um, is there anything else that you're, you're reading or you could, perhaps you could just give us the, the the title of that one again just sources of inspiration learning or just a bit yeah. of you know content dna yeah uh, by john esperian fantastic okay. book okay. um i also read a book called snakes and suits i can't remember who um it was by but y- you know you can't get this name wrong it's a it's a man with a suit you can't see his face on the picture yeah. of the book and he's got a snake round his suit it's called snakes in suits Good grief. and it's quite a deep book yeah. i would say it takes quite a while you can only read certain bits of it mm-hmm. but part of it in there is about a company's culture and i'm big on culture for, for, for me um i only want to work with positive people um, and so that's a good book if anybody's struggling in a workplace at the moment. Um, and it talks about when we talk about a psychopath, we think, oh, it's someone's got, somebody like, you know, Fred West or the Yorkshire Ripper. This is a corporate psychopath. It's about people that are, that are dangerous in workplaces. I'm not saying the Isle of Man's like that for one minute, but it just makes you aware of if it's a poor culture, which normally starts at the top, it's probably not going to get any better. And it might be worth, sounds awful, you're leaving mm. and going to a place that is going to. Because what will happen is you'll just keep using all that energy and you'll burn yourself out and then you'll suffocate. You hear about Are it. Are you with me? Yeah, and no, I yeah. absolutely do. Yeah, and I think as well, uh, some popular TV series, they seem to reflect that. Because yes. it, it makes really good drama on television. Absolutely. About who's, the, you know, who's the office <laughs> nightmare yeah Who's the office nightmare yes good yeah. good word yeah. <laughs> okay, i'm thinking of a stronger one but i know yeah me too but like but su- you remember it. suits yeah did you watch suits the, the, the cor- bits the, of it yeah. yeah corporate culture there was just i need to appalling. watch that can you get that back on can you get online it's on that? netflix is I think. it i think so yeah 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 just appalling because we have worked in certain um environments um where the culture's been amazing. If you're a school leaver and you walk into a, to a, um, a toxic culture environment, and if you look on LinkedIn, it's all about this at the moment. So it's not like, you know, I'm, I'm not talking about something different here. It's, it's so on point, so on point at the moment. If, if you've just left school and you walk, you're going to think that's how it is. But we've been fortunate enough where people have took us under their wings. Mm. They have made us shine. And that, so when you've worked in a, in a, in a, positive culture you spot it a mile away yeah all i'm saying to anybody if you ever get into that situation where you're in a toxic um culture the culture's poor <laughs> it's not very often that it it, it changes nah, go but get let me, job. yeah but <laughs> let me tell else. you there's more positive <laughs> culture um, organizations well, than definitely. negative so don't think oh god it's all like this get out move on and put your energy somewhere else where I can guarantee it'll be used properly and you'll be valued. And that's the big thing here. We need to be valued. Mm. So who inspires you, Joe? Oh, God, who inspires me is Richard Branson. He's my hero. Interesting. Yeah, because one of his quotes, which is one of my favourite quotes, is treat your staff that well that they never want to leave. What a great quote. Yeah. Well, I think we'll leave it there. Not difficult, but, um, really, is no, it? it isn't. It's simple. No, it isn't. <laughs> so so where can people go to learn more ab- about you and the work that you're doing? What, what's your main sort of source? You've got, you okay. got a website. My website yep. is joecutsforth.com. Right. My email address is joe at joecutsforth.com. Yes. Um, I'm on LinkedIn for my business and my, and my personal page. 
Um, my telephone number is 424034. Um, um, did I say Facebook? Yeah, I'm on Facebook LinkedIn. On Facebook as well. Yep. Yeah. Okay. And like I say, get in touch. Let's have a chat. Let's have a coffee. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Joe, for coming in today. It's, it's been my an absolute pleasure. pleasure to meet you. And, and I haven't talked too much, have I? I'm terrible. At no, that. no, but that, I mean, that's kind of the point in a podcast. Good. You know. That's all right then. Because <laughs> I know some people think, oh, it's here again. Not Waffling online. No, mad. no, not at all. Very on point. <laughs> Thank you so much.